Well, huge news in the hot car death case that we've been following here in Georgia. Justin Ross Harris, 33 years old, uh, now indicted on eight counts, including malice murder for the death of his 22-month-old son, Cooper, who died in that hot car back in June. I want to send it out to Martin Savage. He's uh, outside court there where they had this, uh, this indictment this morning. He's also with uh, attorney Philip Holloway, who uh, knows all about the case as well. Martin? Yeah, well, you know, eight counts, and I think one of the, uh, no surprise that it's malice murder. I think Philip and I both agreed on this, that uh, malice murder was probably the way they were going to go. Uh, eight counts, maybe a little bit more, but uh, let's talk about malice murder. Just so people understand, it does not get any more serious in the state of Georgia. No, not in the state of Georgia. This implies premeditation, deliberation, an abandoned and malignant heart is what Georgia code calls malice. So this definitely is as serious as it could possibly get, Martin. But then you got felony murder that comes right after that. Yeah. What's the reasoning there? It's not at all uncommon to see a felony murder count accompany a malice murder account. It's an alternative theory of guilt. It gives the jury another option to convict for murder if they have some particular trouble with the prosecution's proof if the case goes to trial. And it doesn't tie the hands of the prosecutor that they've got only one avenue to pursue. That's exactly right. And if you notice, count three uh, is also felony murder, and it is the same charge that he has been jailed on since the preliminary hearing. That count is based on second degree child cruelty, which involves merely criminal negligence. So so they've got three different avenues of uh, li criminal liability, criminal negligence and, and, and felony murder and malice murder. They have three different ways that they can convict him of murder. And death penalty. We talked about this. It's a possibility. Do you expect that it would be raised and when would we begin to hear about it? Malice murder would make it eligible for the death penalty if, if under Georgia law, if it's deemed to be particularly cruel, heinous, torturous, things like that. Those are the statutory aggravating criteria that would make it eligible. That's a decision the district attorney has to make sometime prior to indictment. Uh, at this point, who knows what they're going to do. We'll just have to wait and see. And then lastly, they've got these two counts here, dissemination of harmful material to minors. This goes to the sexting. That's correct. Why do you bring this in? It seems, I won't say it's, it's not important, it's very important. But you bring it in on this particular prosecution, why? I think that based on the indictment that we see in front of us, putting that together with the testimony we heard at the preliminary hearing, it appears that they want to present the entire picture of this plan, this scheme uh, of what happened to this child and, and everything that led up to it to show motive. That's what it appears to me based on the evidence that we heard at the preliminary hearing as well as the charges contained in this indictment. And so a press conference, Christy, scheduled for 3 o'clock local time Eastern here. And uh, it's then that the prosecutor will speak and maybe even take questions, and you can bet the question will be raised, will they go after the death penalty in this case, Christy? Hey, Martin, can you ask Phil real quickly, what does he think the plausibility is of a plea in this case? Well, absolutely. Uh, in any criminal case, plea bargaining is an option, and it, you know, I think 98% of all cases are resolved, Christy, by plea. Uh, the number of charges in this indictment uh, suggest to me that if there's going to be any kind of plea bargaining going on, that now's the time, because if this case goes to trial and he's convicted of malice murder, as we said, that's as bad as it's going to get in Georgia. And yet, you know that the defense is going to say, wait a minute here, this is a tragic accident, that is all it is. That is what they uh, presented at the preliminary hearing, the probable cause hearing back in July, and it would seem to reason that that might be the defense that we hear if there's ever a trial in this case. That is probably why count three is in this indictment, because if the defense argues that it was an accident and a jury tends to think that maybe it wasn't premeditated, deliberated upon, planned, it gives them something, the jury, to hang their hat on that would still result in a murder conviction. You know this county, so how would Justin Ross Harris have been notified? Is it an attorney that tells him, okay, I've got bad news, or? I would. I would only guessing here, but I would imagine that his lawyers probably already notified him. They actually have televisions at the jail, Martin. He could be watching us right now. I don't know. But no doubt, Christy, he's going to learn that news if he hasn't already very soon. All righty. Martin uh, Savage there and Phil Holloway, we appreciate you both so much. Thank you.